um hello yo so i figured it's about time to make another video listen i know what i said in the previous video about uploading at least one video per week but we don't care let me tell you <laughs> right, let me tell you we don't care Jerry. but you know what i won't bore you with that all right so i've actually learned a thing or two during the past month things that are rather simple but powerful things that you'll most likely need eventually as a scripter in the roblox platform so i put them all together in a little list i'm gonna try to explain what these things are to the best of my ability so open roblox studio or don't though i recommend you do and let's get started all right so if you've been scripting for a while you'll know that the way to put a player in front of another player or in front of another part or whatever is by using something called c-frame and you override the c-frame property of the human root part of the character that you want to pretty much teleport now what nobody tells you about this topic is that server replication can and will you up. what do i mean by this i know the term server replication might seem a little weird to some of you but really it's nothing complex server replication is just a process that goes inside every client where they essentially replicate the information in the general server so that the players can play your game so essentially your client is always overriding what they have on screen with what's actually going on in the server hopefully that makes sense now what's the problem with this obviously for each client to replicate the server it takes a minimal amount of time and it depends on mainly two factors one how far the actual server is from the player and two how fast the client's wi-fi is this means that if you as a client are in america but you're connected to an asian server then you will get high ping however this also means that if you're in america and you're connected to an american server but your wi-fi is trash then you will also get high ping your ping will almost always be a very good metric to see how effectively your client is replicating the server now that you know this you also have to know that the replication speed is is never instantaneous your client needs time to gather data from the server even if it's just a millisecond even if you have zero ping it will never actually be instantaneous that's why the higher the ping the higher the delay of your actions in game because your client just takes longer to retrieve these data and now you might be well Ludius, that's cool and all but what does this have to do with positioning players glad you asked okay so first can we agree that for the most part all players have different ping it's logical right also you must know that the server always replicates the position and activity of the client so when it comes to where the character is and what he's doing it's not server replication but it's more of like client replication yeah let's call, let's call it that let's call it client replication where essentially the server replicates what the client is doing it's like the opposite of server replication so let's say you tell the server to put a player let's say player a in front of player b the server is going to take the c frame of a player a and place player b in front of player a right wait no i got it backwards <laughs> The server is going to take the C-frame of player A and place it in front of player B, right? It's easy. Yes, but no. Because if player B is moving, then player A is going to be put where player B was half a second ago and not where he actually is is leading to a misplacement of player a this is especially noticeable if you anchor the character while you're moving you will clearly see how the player doesn't get placed exactly where the other client is and again this is because replication takes time so there's always a delay in every single action that's happening in game both for the server and for the client now for the most part the misplacement is so subtle that for most cases you don't really have to worry about it but for those specific cases where you do need to worry about it oh boy you're so lucky you're watching this video let's say for example that you're trying to make a move where the player grabs another player and places him in front of you and gets punched or whatever so you reposition him when the hitbox is touched and all that and when you anchor both players or whatever you see that they can't move obviously because you've anchored them and immediately you notice two things number one the player you're attacking is freaking misplaced even when you told the script to place him directly in front of the other player who performs the move and number two the players can literally move the camera around and move their characters or rotate their characters while they have shift lock on and make the move look completely weird will solve both of these problems in one go so how do you fix this misplacement easy instead of taking as a reference the part that's inside the client or should i say the client's character we're gonna create two parts to indicate where both players are gonna be if you're more experienced with scripting i guess you can also just save the c frames in variables instead for what we're gonna do now but i want to use parts so you know exactly what's going on so create a part using instance.new and set it c frame 
keyframe to the humanoid root part C frame of the player who's performing the move. And then we create a second part and place it in front of the first part through modifying its C frame property. Make sure it's rotated accordingly so it's looking at the first part. And after that, all we gotta do is set the C frame of the humanoid root part of the player who's performing the move to the reference part one and the C frame of the humanoid root part of the player who got caught by the other player to reference part two. Also, make sure you anchor both players and both parts. This is gonna make sure they're both aligned properly. And now, if you retry your move, you will see that. Of course, you're gonna see because I actually forgot to mention this part over here. The problem is that the server actually thinks that both players are where both parts are. But your client, like the specific client of the person that performed the move, doesn't. Other people will see you in the place that we want you to be, but the person that performs the move is misplaced. And the way we solve this is we create another script locally and we will reposition your character using that local script. So what we're gonna do now is you're going to go to your functions folder, you're going to create a new bindable function and you're going to name that local repositioner. And in this function, you're gonna get the character and then you're going to say if the character exists, you're gonna get the humanoid root part next. And then you're gonna say humanoid root part dot C frame is equal to C frame and C frame is gonna be an argument that we're gonna pass on when we actually call the function. As you can see here, you're gonna pass on through an argument, the C frame of where you want the character to be. And then once you do that, if you want to test your move again, then as you can see, both people are where both parts are telling you that they should be. And now that we got that out of the way, let's go back to what we were doing. Now they're both perfectly placed, even though it kind of sends the attacker to where he was before, but it's better than having him misplaced, right? But now there's one problem remaining. Both players can still rotate their cameras around while they're supposedly trapped. If you don't want this to happen, the solution is actually pretty easy as well. Each humanoid has inside them a property called auto rotate. Set this to four and the humanoid will no longer rotate even when they have activated shift lock. So get the humanoids of the players when they get initially locked, set the auto rotate property to false, go to the end where they stopped being locked and set both of the humanoid auto rotate properties to true again. Now if you perform the move, they're locked while the move is happening, they're positioned correctly and they can't rotate their characters while they're locked. Alright bro, so this is gonna be the end of the video. Make sure you understand what I said about replication. If you need to go back to make sure you understand it, go back. If you need to watch another video and do more research, then do more research. This is a very important topic for you to know. Also, a lot of you have been asking me lately to be their mentor, but as much as I'd like to be everyone's mentor, bro, I just can't. Like, we all got stuff to do in our lives, and mentoring 10 different people at once is gonna burn my soul, especially if I do it for free. However, if you need help with development, join the Discord. We do development calls every now and then, and essentially, we get in VC, and you can ask me stuff directly, and you can also ask stuff to other people, because I, I don't know everything about scripting, right? Also, I've been thinking about creating, like, a paid community where you'd enter and it'd pretty much be like a place where we do private group calls maybe once or twice a week initially and maybe more in the future inside these calls i just help you with development as best as i can and maybe i can learn from you as well because the more things i learn the more i realize the less things i know and we're all here to grow together right maybe i'd even put some exclusive courses inside there as well i don't know maybe have it like as our own sort of like dev forum where people can post their issues and stuff as well and we can try to help them let me know if you'd be interested in something like that in the comments it'd be much easier to help people that way it will be fun as well and i know that a lot of people don't like paid stuff but i'm also planning on doing free dev calls in the discord so no worries there i guess this said keep leveling up bro be safe and i'll see you when i see you peace